Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 688. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about, is it time to buy? because I'm getting lots of questions from listeners who are asking me, is it time to buy? Should I buy now? Is the market going lower? What's going on? And all of that good news. In fact, I spent a good part of the weekend just calming people's nerves by making posts on Instagram and Facebook. So if you aren't following me on those pages at Facebook, I'm at Linda P. Jones fan page. And on Instagram, I'm at Linda P. Jones and also at Be Wealthy and Smart. You definitely get additional content there and also can interact with me on those pages. So what was going on this weekend was people were getting concerned about the stock market and wondering, have we seen the worst? Is the market going to be going up or are we going lower? The media hyped it so much that Costco and some grocery stores completely sold out of food in Hawaii, Washington State, and a few other states. You know, the media really could be helping us and doing some things to talk about boosting our immunity and encouraging us to do some things that would help. But instead, they're really, really fear-mongering. And this is crazy because here's the reality check. In the United States, we have one death and 16 cases of confirmed coronavirus in seven states. That's it, much less than the normal flu. Now, I understand there are 83,000 cases worldwide and 2,900 deaths, but that does not even compare to a normal flu season where there's 32 million to 45 million cases of flu and 18,000 to 46,000 deaths. So we have 2,900 deaths and one death in the U.S. and the media is going berserk. Just remember, when you watch television, you're not watching a public service situation. You're watching a for-profit business. How do they make profits? By getting more viewers, they can sell higher cost ads to more advertisers. And that is exactly what's going on. They are doing everything they can to hype the bad news. So you have to tune in and they get more viewers and therefore they can raise their advertising rates and make more money. This is unconscionable, but this is what our media is doing. So rather than going to a place of fear, I want you to try to be in a place of calm, confidence, and from a stock market perspective, we'll talk about why you can feel more confident. First of all, the Dow was down 13% in six days, which was a waterfall sell-off, but it was only the 47th largest six-day decline since 1896. And the S&P 500 was down 11.8% this week. Now, when you have a sharp drop, it usually means that there is going to be a sharp rebound. It's kind of like if you had a tennis ball, the farther you drop the tennis ball from, the higher the bounce it's going to result in. It's kind of the same way with the stock market. I think it's quite possible we could open a bit lower on Monday and then a lot of shorts will close their positions, buy back shares, and that will start driving the market higher. I also think it's quite possible we could see a thousand point increase on the Dow sometime this week. So is it time to buy? Well, you can always dollar cost average, and that means just buying at regular intervals. It doesn't have to be only once a month, although you do that in your 401k plan, hopefully buying once a month, but you can buy once this week, once next week, or once today, once at the end of the week. You can buy on weakness, and that certainly is a way to dollar cost average in. One option you have is to start dollar cost averaging now, 
But I also think we're going to have this big rebound and then we're going to go down again a little bit later and test the lows. That means test the low that this market made and see if that low holds. If it does and we don't go any lower than where we've been, that will create a higher low and that means that there's a really good chance that the bottom is in and we can move higher from here. So what I like to do is wait until the market comes back down to test the lows and buy at that time. But it's up to you. There's no perfect way to do it. And anytime you're buying on weakness, it's like buying stocks on sale. So I think you are making a good move. There are some companies that are down quite dramatically and there are bargains to be had for sure. So let's look at historical numbers and look in the past when we have had a sharp sell-off and extreme oversold indications like we have right now and see where the market has been six months, a year, and two years from these oversold extremes. Well, if we look at the most oversold extreme number we have from 2011, six months after that, the market was up 21.7%. One year after that, it was up 28.1%. And two years after the big sell-off, it was up 58.1%. Another example was from 2010. Similar oversold situation. Six months later, the market was up 11.1%. A year later, it was up 26.9%. And two years later, it was up 26%. Another similar situation was 2008. Six months later, it was down 4.2%, but a year later, it was up 21.5%, and two years later, it was up 34.2%. I just want to remind you that when I talk about the long-term stock market average, all of these kinds of sharp pullbacks are already baked into that number. Pullbacks like the Great Depression, World War II, 9-11, the Vietnam War, SARS, Ebola, all of these negative surprises are baked into that long-term stock market return that I always talk about. So whether you have a health crisis like we're having right now, we're always going to have cycles where the market is pulling back. And frequently I mention that the average is about every six years, we have a 10% correction and about every 10 years, we have a 20% correction. So 13.8%, we're right in there with a normal correction that has happened throughout history, normally and regularly happens, and we can certainly expect and hopefully take advantage of. Now I'm gonna share a couple of posts that I wrote that I would like to share with you. In this post, I said, China's stock market is back in a positive territory and up 10% for February. If this is such a disaster, how can that be? Does that seem like China's economy is doomed? We were overdue for a pullback. We were climbing too fast. Unemployment is still low, consumer sentiment high. Now there is a 70% chance of a Fed rate cut. Trade agreements are kicking in the third quarter and the fourth quarter of 2020. And there is only one death from coronavirus in the US. The regular flu has killed 16,000 to 41,000 people in the US since October 1st. Yet no one is calling that a pandemic. When we move past this, I'm expecting the market to go much higher. By September, when the tax cut comes, coronavirus will be a blip in the rearview mirror. Just hang on tight. Great gains are ahead, in my opinion. And I certainly mean that. I really think that we are going to end this year higher, and this is going to be a blip in the rearview mirror. This is definitely not the crisis that the press is making this out to be. And I hope that I've done some things to calm your nerves rather than anger you. But I do try to stay grounded, look at the facts, and not get emotional when it comes to investing. The worst thing you can do as an investor is get emotional. If you start panicking, worrying, fearing for the worst, that is not good as an investor. Although it feels uncomfortable, you just need to weather through it, just say, this too shall pass. We will get through this. There are better times ahead. This is not going to last forever. This is not a permanent situation. It's a very temporary situation. And 
breathe. <laughs> Just allow yourself to move through it. These are always uncomfortable. They're not fun. It's not fun to see your account go down some, and it can feel really painful. The worst thing you can do is to panic and sell because then you've locked in the losses. You don't participate in the rebound. And that's where a lot of the declines are actually made up is in these strong rebounds that come. So just know that this is normal and natural. There's always a different reason why the market declines. It always seems like it's something unique, but it really isn't because these are cycles that the market goes through. And as an investor, these are the things we have to weather through, sit tight, don't sell anything, look at the bargains that you might wanna buy. You can do some dollar cost averaging in or wait for us to go down, test the lows and buy at that time. But I know a year from now, two years from now, there's a really good chance the market will be much, much higher. If you haven't subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available three times a week. And right now we have our review contest going on where you can win one of 25 different prizes. We have 10 of my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio sets valued at $197. We have 10 of my Wealtherist books, which was named to the list of all-time best wealth books by Book Authority. And five people will get one-on-one -on -one wealth mentoring sessions with me. All you need to do is leave a podcast review on iTunes that will get your name in the drawing one time. If you have an Android phone, leave a review on stitcher.com. That's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R.com. That will get your name in the drawing one time. And if you've read The Wealth Heiress book and you leave a review on Amazon, that will get your name in the drawing two times. And winners will be announced in mid-March. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.